Considering home security? Consider this. For 140 years, ADT has helped stop more crime than any other home security company. The yard sign isn't just a sign. It's a line in the sand. It's no wonder five times more people choose ADT to protect their homes. Visit ADT.com to learn more. For license information and terms and conditions, visit ADT.com. This this is the Stephen A. Smith Show Podcast. I'm Stephen A. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the latest edition of the Stephen A. Smith Show, coming at you as I love to do every weekday over the airwaves of ESPN Radio. That's 98.7 FM New York City. That's 710 ESPN LA, ESPN LA, and of course, nationwide over the airwaves of Sirius XM Radio, ESPN Channel 80. Number to call up as always is 866-729-ESPN. That's 729-3776. 866-SAY-ESPN. Look. I got a lot of stuff that I want to get into today. Kevin Durant's comments saying that basketball helped him avoid systemic oppression. I got that to get into. I got the greatness of uh, of LeBron James to get into. I got David Fisdale, the coach for the Memphis Grizzlies, getting fired after an eight-game loser streak this early in the season. I'll tell you how bogus that was and why. But I got to tell you something right now. Being in Philadelphia last night, watching the Cleveland Cavaliers go up against the Philadelphia 76ers, a Philadelphia 76ers team that that shot like 3 or 23 from three-point range, that couldn't buy a three-point basket to save their life, that was ballyhooed as the up-and-coming team. You know, everybody, trust the process, trust the process, which is something I absolutely positively abhor to the point where I want to cuss anybody out that asked me the damn question. I got to tell you something right now. The greatness of LeBron James and what he has been putting on display, I got to tell y'all, I'm a little depressed by it. Now, I know that's a weird, weird, weird angle to take. My producers are looking at me with their raised eyebrows. Jonathan Winthrop looking at me. You know, Nuno Texiera sticking his head over the window, seeing like, what the hell are you talking about? Cat passes like, hey, 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 what's going on with him? Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something right now. I got to admit to you. I got to admit to you. It's kind of depressing me, and here's why. The Chris Stapps Porzingis in New York. The Ben Simmons in Philadelphia. The Lonzo Ball in L.A., which, by the way, he doesn't even deserve to be mentioned in the same breath as the two aforementioned individuals that are rookies this year. Let me tell you something. Well, Chris Stapps Porzingis is not a rookie, but you know what I'm saying. Young players. I'm desperate for somebody to show up and not literally wait at the altar of LeBron James, but be an individual that's young enough and stupid enough to get in his face and say, I'm coming for you and actually mean it. Actually mean it. There's no one. There's absolutely positively no one. In New York. As much as we may love Chris Stapps Porzingis, you still think he's the number one option? Still think that? You know better than that now, don't you? Now that they're on a three-game losing streak, now that teams have been allowed to zero in on him, get all up in those long legs of his, undercut him and what have you, push him away from the block, force shots to be tougher, suddenly don't look like the world beater he looked like for the first 11 games, does he? If you're in L.A., Ladies and gentlemen, let me say this for the record. I'm no longer scared of Lonzo Ball being less than what we anticipated. I'm absolutely flat out petrified. One for seven shooting, one for three point point range. For a player in his first 20 games – in the National Basketball Association, nobody has had a shooting percentage worse at this stage in their careers in 30 years. 30 years. That's how bad it has been for Lonzo Ball. And I don't know about the rest of y'all, but I'll be damned if I'm not worried. I'm getting very, very petrified for this young man. 
And in the end, we've talked about Kyrie Irving. We've talked about James Harden, who's another league MVP candidate looking absolutely surreal. We've talked about Melo and Westbrook and 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 and, and, and Paul George in Oklahoma City. We've talked about the Golden State Warriors and the greatness of that collection of talent. But the subject hasn't been altered a bit when it comes to who we believe to be the best player in basketball. That's LeBron James. By the way, he looks about 15 pounds heavier. He's averaging 28, 8, and 8. He's shooting 48% from three-point range in the eight-game winning streak that Cleveland is presently under. By the way, it's an eight-game winning streak like I just said. And they don't even have Isaiah Thomas yet. They don't even have him. I don't know about y'all. But this, 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 this is kind of demoralizing if you want competitive basketball because I'm here to tell you something right now. If LeBron keeps this up, the only team, only people that's going to be able to stop him is Golden State. There's nobody else that's going to be able to mess with LeBron James if this continues. What are you going to do? It's just that prolific. It's that great. It's that unstoppable. It's that awe-dropping. I wish I could get around it. I wish I could tell you that there was an answer. But I mean, damn. When you look at it right now, when you see the way that he's been performing, what is there to say? The man is built like a linebacker with a jump shot. And I wish I had an answer for you, but I'm worried there is none. 866-729-ESPN. That's 866-729-3776. 866-SAY-ESPN. That's one subject that I plan on getting into today. The other was that of Kevin Durant. Now, do we have that sound on Kevin Durant? Because I want the world to notice. We heard what Kevin Durant had to say. Talking about being a basketball player. Talking about being a superstar. Talking about being an African-American. In those positions. And essentially saying, if it wasn't for that, he would be treated less than what he actually is. You got a lot of people speaking up. And perhaps making folks uncomfortable on purpose. That's what we're witnessing. That's what we're seeing. But the reason I bring that up is because I juxtaposed that to to keep to keep to leap and Michael Crabtree getting in trouble by getting themselves suspended for two games based off of their fight this past Sunday. By the way, ladies and gentlemen, they deserved the two game suspension. You heard it here first. They absolutely positively deserved to be suspended for the two game. One room for it. Not happy about it. I like both guys. They deserve to be suspended. You just cannot do what they did. You cannot act that way. What they did was bad for football. What they did was bad for the NFL. What they did was bad for themselves. Really bad. But there's something even worse that they did that I don't think you all have considered. I'll let that marinate on your brain before I tell you what, exactly what that is. 866-729-ESPN. That's 866-SAY-ESPN. You are listening live to the Stephen A. Smith Show ESPN Radio. I will revisit this topic and tell you how bad it is and why it's so bad that they did what they did in a minute. Stick around. You're listening live to the Stephen A. Smith Show. ESPN Radio. Want to be a part of the show? It's Stephen A. Up weekdays from 1 to 3 Eastern at 866-729-3776. Computer, execute 12.4p operation. Optimizing algorithm. Running encryption packet alpha. Night, night. Oh, I don't feel so good. What? What is it, computer? Is it hot in here? It feels hot in here? I feel a little clammy. I should lie down or something. A computer with a virus? Surprising. What's not surprising? 
how much you could save by switching to Geico. Those oysters Rockefeller were a mistake. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. You're listening to the Stephen A. Smith Show podcast. It's not popular to say. It's not something that people want to tackle. But what you have to understand is that it's about being real. It's not about being altruistic all the time. It's not about talking about the way things should be or idealistic. Sometimes it's about being realistic and talking about the way things are. So I want to connect the dots for you. You have a situation where Colin Kaepernick takes a knee. He wants to protest racial oppression. He never was protesting against the American flag. He was saying that there are folks in this country getting away with not living up to what the flag is supposed to represent. Nevertheless, eventually the issue is hijacked. Primarily by the president of the United States, who, as far as I'm concerned, has won the issue of the day because he's brought the kind of attention to it that serves his purpose and that of millions of Americans who disagreed with Colin Kaepernick. Ratings for the NFL have slid. Revenue has dipped. All of these things have happened to the point where the residue is obvious. Jerry Jones fighting Roger Goodell for his uh, his new contract. You know, that's just the most glaring, glaring piece of information that emanates from all of that. So when you're talking about that, why do you bring up Akeem Tlaib and Michael Crabtree fighting? I'll tell you why. Because when they were talking, John, Cat, others, when they were talking, you heard the announcers, they called it a brawl. Okay? You know how people were looking at them, right? And how much money are you willing to bet that there were a plethora, meaning millions of folks out there, who in all likelihood look nothing like them, don't come and don't share their backgrounds or anything like that? How much do you want to make a bet that those individuals looked at these guys and said, see how they're acting? And these are the people that have the audacity to protest our flag. That's how they're going to look at it. You and I both know that. Not about right and wrong. Because this is what it is. We can sit up there and slice it any damn way we want to. That's what it comes down to. How you conduct yourself, how you present yourself, particularly in this day and age as a professional athlete, matters. Because something as simple as that, that had absolutely positively nothing to do with the protest. The fact that Akeem Tlaib and Michael Crabtree were on that field fighting like that and allowing themselves to be depicted in a way that they were being depicted adds fodder and fuel to those aching to attach negative stereotypes, looking to use it as an impetus or as motivation to justify their ill feelings towards those NFL players who are protesting. You see, when Kevin Durant comes out and he says what he says, understand something about Kevin Durant. And this is a dude that has attacked me and has gotten on me because he didn't like something. I said, I don't give a damn. Kevin Durant is a superstar. And he's a damn good young man. He represents our community and represents Various communities in this country in an incredibly upstanding fashion. Don't get me started with how wonderful his mama is. She is a special lady in a very, very good way. And she has raised a phenomenal son. Just because he has attitude and gets a bit temperamental at times doesn't take away from the great person that he is. And by the way, the same goes for LeBron. But you see, when they speak on these issues, knowing that they're worth hundreds of millions of dollars, and they talk about systemic oppression and things of that nature, it's valid coming out of their mouths. Because they don't turn around and 
cheat the paying customer with nonsense like we saw from Akeem Tlaib and Michael Crabtree. And I'm in no way saying that Michael Crabtree and Akeem Tlaib did it on purpose. But the fact is they weren't conscientious enough to recognize that that negative spat just between them wasn't just between them. It was in front of the world. And when you do something like that, you feed the negative stereotypes. Presentation matters. And I'm going to take it a step further. I'm going to get on everybody about this. But I'm not going to apologize for attaching some blackness to it because when you're not even the dominant minority any longer, There are odds stacked against you that are more significant than odds stacked against people from other communities, whether it would be the Hispanic community or the white community. It's not that it's right for the odds to be stacked against you. It's wrong, but it is reality. And as a result, you got to climb that ladder. As unfair as it is, it's real. So how you present yourself matters. How you act matters. How you behave matters. How you speak matters. How you dress matters. Whether you like it or not. Kevin Durant had every right to say what he said. Being black in America, it's hard. What would he be if he wasn't bouncing the basketball? That's all they look at him as. They don't think much of him. He had to come to that realization that without basketball, he wouldn't mean a damn thing to most people who claim to love him so much. He's right. But be very clear. He also has the right to say it because he knows how to act. There's a lot of dudes that want to stick out their chest and bloviate and speak and go off about stuff. They don't want to act right. You can't have it all. You got to capitulate to something. Don't give a damn who you are. 866-729-3776. That's 866-SAY-ESPN. There's a reason why you love LeBron and Kevin Durant and Chris Paul, and Dwayne Wade, and Kobe, and others. It's not that they're flawless. It's not that folks don't make mistakes. It's that ultimately, they present and conduct themselves in a manner that exudes professionalism and a responsibility to something greater and higher than themselves. When you really, really get to talk and speak out is when you do that. When you don't do that and you're more concerned about yourself, you need to shut the hell up and go someplace. Or in the case of Tlaib and Crabtree, sit down for a couple of games without pay until you recognize that it ain't just about you. Paul Feinbaum, college football analyst extraordinaire, up next to talk to us about the imminent rankings coming out and about the debacle, the fiasco at Tennessee. That and more in a minute. You're listening live to the Stephen A. Smith Show. ESPN Radio. Guess what? You're in the middle of the Stephen A. Smith Show podcast. Damn it, I mean it! It's always my honor and privilege to have my next guest on the line. He is labeled the mouth of the South by others other than me. Because as far as I'm concerned, he is not just a mouth of the South. He is a mouth on all things college football. He's a mouth on all things football because he knows all the players, figuratively and literally. I'm talking about the great Paul Feinbaum, who's live with yours truly right now. What's going on, buddy? How you doing? It is always a pleasure, Stephen. I thank you so much. It thank, means a lot. Thank you. Let's let's get right into a couple of things. Before we get into these rankings that are coming out tonight and, and what have you, I got to talk to you about what happened um, at Tennessee because – What happened to Greg Schiano, as far as I'm concerned, is one of the most egregious, awful things that I've ever seen. You don't want him to be the head coach at Tennessee. So you're a bunch of fans and a bunch of Twitter trolls, and you associate this man's name with child molestation, accusing him of being a part of a cover-up, and Tennessee backs out. 
I, have you ever seen anything in all your years of college football that has been disegregious? No, I haven't. And, and Stephen, I, you know, it, it, it may be, it may turn out that Tennessee gets a better coach, and I'm sure uh, people will say they did the right thing, but they didn't do the right thing because they made false allegations. I mean, you hear the president and others talk about fake news all the time. I mean, this. This, this wasn't even fake. I mean, fake usually is just something that, that's made up to help your cause. I mean, this was, this was made up uh, to destroy a man. And, and I don't know if he can get over that, because if you're the next school out there thinking about hiring Greg Schiano, you're looking at this and going, I, I don't want to go through this. And, you know, a, a lot of people were involved that, that didn't have any earthly idea what they were doing, including state representatives, politicians. And, and for, for a university, uh, Stephen A., I mean, we both went to college, and you go to college to learn, to, to stand up for your principles. And if, yeah. if, you're, if you make a decision to hire someone, stand by it. Well, here's my question, Paul. Doesn't he, I mean, I know you're not a lawyer, but doesn't he have, isn't it plausible that he may have grounds for a lawsuit against the university because of their irreparable um, harm they may have done to his, his career? I mean, the only thing that, yeah, he, he probably does, uh, you, know, it, you know, first of all, he's got, he may have a breach of contract suit, and then he may have a defamation suit. It, it would be a difficult thing, but more than likely, uh, I would love to take the case because the University of Tennessee would probably write him a check in about three minutes to get him off their back. Uh, because, I mean, they, they by, by caving in, they confirmed what everyone thought. Uh, and, and what was the most egregious part of it, was the athletic director there, John Curry. I mean, he issued, after he backed out Stephen A., then he issues a statement essentially saying that, you know, they vetted this man, they did due dil- diligence, like he quoted the Louis Free report uh, that nothing was wrong. Uh, then if that's the case, then why in the world did you back out? Paul Fonbon right here with Stephen A. on ESPN Radio. On a lesser note, uh, UCLA has a new football coach. It's Chip Kelly. Um, what do you think about him taking that job? What kind of what kind of job do you think he's going to do at UCLA? Talk to me about that for a second. Stephen, he made the right decision. Uh, I mean, going to Florida would have been a mistake. And, and I, listen, I've met Chip Kelly a number of times sitting around the green room, so I don't want to act like you know we're, we're golfing buddies. But he, but he, he's an he's an introvert. He's a great coach, but you know, if you, to go to Florida, I mean, you got to be able to spend half the time schmoozing. And I don't think that's what Chip Kelly wants to do. He's, he's an offensive genius. I think he wants to coach. UCLA is, is not a top-10 job, but, it, but it's in a great league that he knows and has dominated when he was at Oregon. It's in a good market, and, and I think he will be successful. The question then becomes, what, what is success at UCLA? Is it winning eight or nine games, uh, maybe every five years going to the Rose Bowl, or is it trying to stay on the same level as Southern Cal? I don't know how possible that is, but, but I do but know that, Chip that's Kelly. That's where I'm going. That's where I'm going, yeah. Paul. I want to know with Chip Kelly in Westwood, what's the possibility of Chip Kelly, you know, usurping USC in any way there? Well, number one, he's a better coach than Helton at, at SC. I'm not, I'm not that impressed with, with, with Coach Helton. I mean, he, he's with, with, with a lot of talent, including Sam Darnold. Uh, even playing for the Pac-12 championship Friday night, I think he may have underperformed. I mean, Notre Dame, remember, just ran all over them. It was an embarrassment to Southern Cal. So I, I think that's doable. I, I really do. And, and UCLA has had pockets of success. They've had Troy Aikman. Josh Rosen uh, was, a, was, a, was a top-flight quarterback. So I think Chip Kelly can, can attract that type of quarterback. Uh, they're pretty close to getting a commitment from one of the best quarterbacks in the country. So if they can keep that commitment firm uh they'll be on their way but i think if you're a hot shot quarterback in, in that area i would rather play for for chip kelly i mean you know he he, he is the best in the business at offensive play calling talking about great paul Feinbaum right here with Stephen a on espn radio let's get into the rankings uh before we even do that would you mind explaining to me what happened with your boys roll tide Alabama, who you pick? I mean, I, I mean, you've been talking about them being the number one team in the country. I mean, you're not alone. I'm guilty of it too. You know what? I don't mind them losing. I didn't expect them to get beat up the way they got beat up, Paul. What happened? No, I mean, th- this was unbelievable. Uh, you know, Nick Saban has been out coached a handful of times in in his career, but I mean, he, he was badly out coached. And, and, and I just think uh, in the end, you know, a couple of things went, went wrong. Uh, he was playing in a very hostile environment. It was a toxic place to try to win. He, but but that's, not, that's not enough. His defense is beaten up. And, and in, in, at the end of the day, Stephen, and this, isn't, this isn't what anyone wants to hear, but Auburn is playing at a level right now at home that is probably better than anyone else in the country. And Alabama just could not answer that. And, 
Well, what, what got me wasn't the fact that they were not executing that well, but they were just inept. I mean, that series toward the end of the game when, when, when you know, the two botched snaps, I mean, that's inexcusable. And in fairness, uh, Saban has not always looked great in that, in, that, in that environment. He's had a couple of losses, not many. I mean, the guy loses once a year, so, so, so don't act like I'm, I'm, I'm writing him off. But, but it, it was a shocker. And, and, and if it cost them getting in the playoff, then it, they probably deserve not to be in because you can't lay an egg like that on the biggest stage of the year in college football. For me, Paul, I look at the rankings, and if it were me doing the rankings, if I was one of these 13-member committee, 13-member committee members, here's what my number, here's what my ranking would be. I'd have Oklahoma at number one. I'd have Clemson at number two. I'd have Auburn now in the top four, having beaten Georgia when they were number one. Now Alabama when they were number one within the month. I would have them at number three. And I would have undefeated Wisconsin at number four with Alabama at number five on the outside looking in and Ohio State at number six on the outside looking in. Would you have any issue with that? I wouldn't have much at all. I mean, I, I, I've gone back and forth this week between Oklahoma and Clemson. Uh, they're, they're both pretty much on the, same, on, the, on the same level with the, you know, Wisconsin, I didn't want to believe in early on, but, but I give them credit. I don't think they'll beat Ohio State. So, you know, that will open up a, a very interesting door. And I, I think for the, uh, in the four years of the college football playoffs, Stephen A., we really haven't had what I would call great conversations. TCU versus Baylor the first year. Right. Uh, Ohio State got in. That, that didn't excite me. Last year, the Penn State-Ohio State conversation is actually the, the opposite of, of where we are now. Uh, Ohio State's in Penn State's position. What I can't buy about Ohio State, how do you lose by 31 at Iowa? On the, in the second half of the season, maybe on the first day you recover, but that, but that that's that's in the middle to to, to thir- the third quarter of the season. That's inexcusable to me, and, and so I would you know assuming that they could, they beat uh, Wisconsin, uh, I'm probably I would I would put Alabama in over Ohio State. Oh, I would, Again, I would, you know, the, I would elaborate right. on it from this perspective. You not only lost on the road by 31 to Iowa, you got beat up at home by Oklahoma. Yeah, you did. You did. You, you look bad on the road and at home. You lost. Okay, that's what... in both games. In both games in the second half, they were out of it. I mean, they weren't. Even, I mean, they, they were. They were. They were run over. Uh, again, uh, Oklahoma's a good team. Uh, I'll, I'll give you one, but I'm not going to give you two. Before I let you get on out of here, you question Miami and whether or not they were legit. Then they sit up there and they win a big game a few weeks ago against Notre Dame. And you put on the, the 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 hurricane chain, and you're like Miami is back. <laughs> you know, you know, looking looking like a middle aged rap artist. That's how you look, Paul Paul Feinbaum. Okay, it was hilarious. All right, it was great. It was great television. And after we're middle ready, age? and then, well, I wouldn't say that, sir. I'm, I'm being respectful. Being no, 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 please, please, you're a good looking man. But here's the deal. <laughs> Tell me this, Paul. And then they turn around and let you down with this loss. Oh, yeah. You, you know, listen. I don't know why everyone says they're automatic by beating Clemson. I mean, I, they, they should be disqualified for losing to Pittsburgh. How do you lose to Pittsburgh? Mm-mm-mm. Okay. I don't is, see By it. the way, is there – I is have there, no answer there, to that. Hey, by the way, is there, is there a 60-year-old rapper I can compare myself to? No, there are none, Paul. But it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. They, they, they should be trying to compare themselves to you. You're great. Thanks a lot, buddy. <laughs> Always a pleasure, Stephen A. Take it easy, buddy. The one and only Paul Feinbaum right here with Stephen A. on ESPN Radio, 866-729-ESPN. That's 866-SAY-ESPN. You heard Paul Feinbaum break down college football's rankings. They're coming out tonight. You heard what I had to say. Oklahoma, Clemson, Auburn, then Wisconsin. Any problem with that? Get over it. We'll be talking about that. Crabtree and Tlaib. You heard what I had to say about that. LeBron James, the greatness of him. The Warriors and so much more. Lonzo Ball. Good Lord. Good Lord. Oh, I'll just leave it at that for now. You're listening live to the Stephen A. Smith Show, ESPN Radio. Give Stephen A. a piece of your mind. He is sorry. Call him weekdays from 1 to 3 Eastern. I mean, just trash. At 866-729-3776. Guess what? You're in the middle of the Stephen A. Smith Show podcast. Damn it, I mean it. Back to the Stephen A. Smith Show, ESPN Radio. Let's get right to the phones at 866-729-3776, 866-SAY-ESPN. Let's go to Fred. You're live with Stephen A. What's up, Fred? Stephen A., brother. How you doing, man? I'm all right. Go ahead, man. Hey, man. First time call, a long time listener, man. I, I I love what you say 95% of the time. Mm-hmm. This one particular time I had to call in, brother. I, I, I disagree with you on the Crabtree. Um, 
the fight. What do you disagree uh, about? Um, you, 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 you kind of came off to me as saying we, you, you know, those two guys kind of solidify what certain people believed about us, or that fight kind of gave us a bad rap. Okay. I think the people who look at that fight and they and they make up their mind off of that fight, yeah, yeah, they they're exactly what Trump said they were. They felt that way about us in the first place. Okay, but so, see, but see, here's where I have a problem with what you're saying. You come across as if I'm trying to say that those people are right. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that even when they're wrong, you have to pay attention to it. If you owned a business, right, Fred, and I'm, assu- I, I'm, I'm assuming that you don't. I, I apologize. It's not an insult or anything like that. If you own a business, I apologize. But if, if, if you're an owner of a business, right, and you're trying to sell a product, the customer could be trifling. But if you want their money, don't you have to appease to them? Yes, sir. And that's all I'm talking about. I'm saying that when you're in that kind of situation, certainly they thought that way anyway. Certainly they wanted an excuse to believe that about them. But as grown-ups, particularly African-Americans, we tell youngsters all the time, don't feed the beast. Don't give them the ammunition that they're looking for, even when we know folks are looking for it. And I'm saying the same thing here. I'm not saying they're wrong. I'm saying it's a reality that you have to deal with, and you can't ignore it. And I think those two players were paying no attention to it whatsoever, and that was my issue. I I, I agree 100%, man. And I I guess what the point I'm trying to make is – you're not necessarily giving those people ammunition because they got all the ammunition they need already. Mm. Uh, they they going to feel how they're going to feel. If those boys went out there and said a prayer together, they're going to ignore that. And they're going to ignore the 99% of the time that these brothers go out there and treat themselves like absolute professionals. And that one instant, I mean, we are talking about football, but you, but, but you, but you, sport th- in the world. That, that's true. But here's my point to you because football is the most violent sport in the world. And, you're, and you have a license to exact and exercise the violence against another human being, and it's completely within the rules. It's a gladiator sport. When you go beyond the pale, even in that venue, what does that say about you? Emotions, man. There we go. And what I'm saying Emotions. to you, and what I'm saying to you is that you and I both can understand it, but we can't condone it. If we're really in search of a better place, because the reality is, is that there's more than enough violence within the rules that there's no excuse for you to go beyond them. To go beyond them, even when you already have a license to be more violent than the average Joe or citizen out there speaks to an absence of control that you have. That's not an imagery that you want to give off. I I, I agree 100 percent, Stephen. I'll let you go on this, man. I. I, you're 100% right. I just don't, if somebody took that like I did, which, you know, I kind of filtered it my own way mm-hmm. to think that we need to try to appease to people so they don't look at us a certain way. And my, my thought on that is people who are going to look at you that way over right. an event like that already look at you. That's like fair. That That's fair. My response is they're still the paying customer. And you want their money. So that's something, that's a reality you have to deal with. Unless you had your own and you didn't need their money. That's all I'm saying. Fred, thank you for the call, my brother. And happy holidays to you in case I don't hear from you again. Really appreciate it. Kennedy, you're live with Stephen A. Go ahead. Hey, Stephen A. Smith. Uh, like the last gentleman said, first time caller, long time uh, fan. And. Like you said, 95% of the time, I'm agree with you, and 5% I'm not. This time, I, I am in agreement with you, and, man, you kind of took the words out of the thing. I wish I was able to ding me in first, because the, the, what you ended with is basically where I was going to attack this from. Uh, first and foremost, I am a professional. I've been in the Army for 72 years, and I'm an officer. Man. You know what? You know what, Kennedy? Do me a favor. I'm going to interrupt you because your signal is really, really bad, and I want to hear what you have to say. So we're going to go to a hard break in a little bit. 
I want you to hold on and make sure your signal's clear so we can understand what you're saying because we can't understand that right now. All right, my man, thank you so much. Let's go to Rob in the Bronx. You're live with Stephen A. Go ahead, Rob, real quick. Just a few things, Stephen A. The Knicks are losing games because they got deplorable defense okay. and too many turnovers. All right. They got to fix that. And I hear my fellow New Yorkers. Rob, you only LeBron Rob, you James, only got 45 seconds, so just go ahead and make your okay. point real quick. Go I, ahead. I hear them talk about LeBron James. I take LeBron James here. He's the king. The Knicks ain't been to a final since 1999. Mm-hmm. We ain't won a chip since ni- 1973. Mm-hmm. The last playoff appearance was the first round 2013 bus. Come on, why would you not want a man that's been to nine finals and, and won three? We ain't been to a final since 99. And as far as Lonzo Ball, I don't know. Lonzo Ball, look, he, Magic Johnson picked Lonzo Ball, and I know you, you dissed me the last time I said that. He gave the people what they wanted, but if, Lon, if Magic would have took Tatum, no one, would, no one in L.A. would even be thinking about you, you, Lonzo you're Ball. You're probably right? right about that right now, Rob. This is a good time to say that. Nobody can dispute you or refute what you're saying right now. You got me there. 866-729-ESPN, 866-ESPN. Hour number two up next. More NBA and NFL action to get into. Don't touch that dial. Stephen A. Smith Show, ESPN. That's just a sample of what you'll hear on the Stephen A. Smith Show. Weekdays at 1 p.m. Eastern on Sirius XM Channel 80 and the ESPN app. Considering home security? Consider this. For 140 years, ADT has helped stop more crime than any other home security company. The yard sign isn't just a sign. It's a line in the sand. It's no wonder five times more people choose ADT to protect their homes. Visit ADT.com to learn more. For license information and terms and conditions, visit ADT.com. This this is the Stephen A. Smith Show Podcast. I'm Stephen A. Hour number two of the Stephen A. Smith Show here with you for the next hour over the airwaves of ESPN Radio, Sirius XM, Channel 80. Number to call up as always is 866-729-3776. That's 866-SAY-ESPN. I'm distracted. Please forgive me for being distracted by news. I'm watching the news channels right now. North Korea has just fired a ballistic missile. 74-day reprieve from testing their missiles, they launched one just a few minutes ago. Uh, Let me get back to sports. I'll just leave it at that. Um, Something happened yesterday in the National Basketball Association that really, really, really got on my nerves. I can't put into words how ticked off I am about this. It is necessary for me to say this. David Fisdale head coach for the Memphis Grizzlies, was fired. Team has been struggling, has lost eight straight. I think their record was like, what is it, 7-11 and 11 or 8-11, something along those lines. Uh, he was fired. Um, He got screwed. We can slice it any way we want to. He got screwed. We can slice it any way we want. The man got screwed over. Took him to the playoffs last year. Was considered a very good young coach. The Greg Popoviches of the world and others spoke up on his behalf. Was an assistant in Miami for years. LeBron James tweeted about him being a fall guy. Dwayne Wade wanted an investigation, an explanation. They played for him. As players, he was an assistant coach in Miami when they won those two rings, when they went to four straight NBA finals. He got screwed. There is no reason this man should have lost his job. None. Now, according to my sources and Adrian Wojnarowski, our NBA insider extraordinaire also uh, reported this, there was beef between him and Mark Gasol. It's been going on for quite some time. And the other day when David Fisdale elected to bench Marc Gasol for the fourth quarter in a loss because they were down by about 19 points and a reserve brought them back to within five, and David Fisdale wanted to leave them back in the game, and he didn't want Marc Gasol, you know, 
back in the game. Marc Gasol was livid. He was professional in what he said, but he made it very, very clear he was not happy. According to my sources, he made that very, very clear to management. Management made the call to let David Fisdale go because they hadn't been getting along. I know Marc Gasol could play. Marc Gasol ain't LeBron James. Marc Gasol ain't Kobe in his prime. Or Shaq in his prime. Marc Gasol are not these people. Marc Gasol is not Steph Curry. Marc Gasol is not Russell Westbrook. He's not these people. You're going to get rid of this man? Really? Really? I'm sick to my stomach. I really, really am. And the owner for the Memphis Grizzlies. I mean, listen, GM Chris Wallace, I haven't seen him in a long time. But he's a good man. And I'm certainly not going to excoriate him. But I got to tell you, you know, it's just amazing to me that this guy, this owner, would make this call, allow this call to be made, if not flat out made it himself. It really, really, really bothers me. Robert Perra. So Lionel Hollins is there. After taking him to the Western Conference Finals and winning 56 games, you get rid of him. Then Dave Yeager's there. Having some success, you get rid of him. And now David Fisdale just took him to the playoffs. And, excuse me, you're going to get rid of him less than 20 games into the season. Because you're on some some, some losing streak. Now, J.B. Bickerstaff, who did a relatively decent job as the interim coach in Houston after Kevin McHale got fired, is finds himself in a similar situation now in Memphis. But it's still bogus. Absolutely, positively bogus. If I'm anybody, I'm really, really questioning whether or not I'd want that Memphis job. Mark Gasol? I understand he could play. He's no scrub. He's been to a few all-star games. I get all that. But Mark Gasol, if Mark Gasol can get you fired, how much security can you have? Mark Gasol. You got to be kidding me. What a damn shame. David Fisdale lands someplace else. But the man is special. Man's a hell of a young coach. He got screwed over. Plain and simple. 866-729-3776. That's 866-SAY-ESPN. Back to the phones we go. Let's go to Andre in Newark. You're live with Stephen A. What's up? Yes, how you doing, Stephen A.? I'm all right. Talk to me. Okay, um, I wanted to ask you, um, is Lonzo, would you consider Lonzo Ball a bust now? A bust? Yes. No, I just want to hold out on that, man. He's a kid. His first 20 games in the NBA. I don't want to do that to him. I will tell you, I am petrified that he's going to be. Mm-hmm. I'm scared, but I'm rooting for him, and I'm prayerful that it won't end up that way because I want him to succeed and I want Magic to succeed. But I got to tell you right now, Lonzo Ball, listen, I, I, you know what? I don't know who's – can I say this? No, no, John, can I say this? I don't know who's worse. Lonzo Ball or Neil Aquina? Frank Nitekina for the Knicks. I mean, you talk about a guy that just doesn't give me anything. Nitekina doesn't give me anything. I really don't know why he's on the court. And I'm not saying he can't defend. I'm not saying he doesn't serve any purpose. But you talk about a guy that's just blah, that just has, to me, zero impact. It's him. And with Lonzo, I- I'm just seeing a one for seven shooting, one for six from three point range, twenty three percent three point shooting, thirty percent shooting uh, from the field in thirty years. No NBA player in their first twenty games of their careers, Andre, has shot worse than Lonzo Ball. I, that's just bad, bro. That's just bad, and it's making Magic Johnson look very bad. I sincerely hope Lonzo gets it together because I really genuinely like the kid. I'm not rooting. First of all, I wouldn't root against any of them anyway, but I'm especially not rooting against him. But I am very, very 
petrified right now, Andre, based on what I'm seeing from his game. Okay, and one more question. Uh, do you think do you think the Cavs, you know, I know that Boston been on the little streak or whatever, but do you think the Boston Celtics have enough to take on LeBron, especially while no. he's playing now? No. No. Um, I think that LeBron looks unreal. I think that when Isaiah Thomas comes back, it's going to be even worse. Um, and I also think that LeBron just looks massive. LeBron just, I mean, he looks he looks like a, 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 a linebacker playing against Pop Warner kids. That's how big he looks compared to these guys out on the court. They can't mess with him, man. Okay. Thanks, Stephen. I appreciate it, Thank you. It, man. Thank you. Let's take take care. Let's go back to Kennedy. You're live with Stephen A. Kennedy. Hopefully your signal's better now. What's up? Hopefully. Can, is, it, is it good? Can you yes, it well? is. It's better. Much better. Go ahead. Okay. What I wanted to say is, first and foremost, I, I am a fan. I've always been a fan. It's my first time calling. Um, Thank you. I've been in the Army for 17 years, and I'm an officer, and I consider myself to be a professional. And as an African-American, when I saw that fight, between those two guys that I will not name, it hurt me. And I also said it at that very moment. I said it set us back. And I heard what the other gentleman talked about and what he had. He made some valid points about the perception about us is already out there and that's not going to change the narrative. But you have a platform. And we are in a time right now where, you know, the example has already been made with Kaepernick. We know he's been blackmailed. We know, not blackmailed, but we know he's been blackballed in the league. Right. But we have an opportunity to stand together and continue to, you know, unite and bring forth the message that he's, that he's been trying to um, bring forth for the past year and so. And I understand emotions get involved when, 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 when things happen on the field. And like you said, you took the words out of my mouth because that's what – you have a license. Football is a competitive sport. Oh, I know they got to throw you the ball. Or oh, I know you got to set up a block. Next time you come, I'm coming after you. But to to go through blows and then to go after each other for more blows and to continue to go after each other, helmets off and you're swinging punches and you do, that is just nasty. That was embarrassing. They should be embarrassed. I, I know you said the two games was enough, man. I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be mad at the Leeds suspending them. For, for the remainder of the season. And I and I understand sometimes some people could say that's going too far, but let me tell you right now, man, when soldiers get in trouble or they do something, their careers are pretty much over. They're yeah. giving their their pay is being taken away without the yeah, worry I, about I, you, their you, bills you, you, and on. their family. Let, let, let me let me interrupt you, Kennedy. I, I get your point and I appreciate your passion, but it's important that you understand that these are games that's being played where your soldiers defending our country and putting your life on the line. So the mistakes that you make can cost you and others their actual lives. Whereas in the sport of football, when you're fighting on a football field, it's a pretty slim to numb chance that that's not going to happen. That's the difference. So I understand where you're coming from, but to put things in its proper perspective, I don't think it's right to compare football players to soldiers like yourself because you live in two different worlds. And I do agree with that. It's just as a, I, when, when you I'm look at it from a, pro- a professional standpoint and right. this happens, even when you're not in combat soldiers, you know, when they get, when they check up, right. whether it's, you I, know, I, like how you like to say smoke. Yeah, the weed that's right. I got, I got to interrupt stuff. you cause we got to get ready to go. I got to go to a hard break, but I appreciate the call, man. And I definitely appreciate your passion. And I thank you uh, for your service to our country. I truly appreciate it, man. Thank you so much. 866-729-ESPN, 866-ESPN. More to Stephen A. Smith show on ESPN radio in a minute. Catch the Stephen A. Smith Show live on 98.7 ESPN New York, ESPN LA 710, and Sirius XM Channel 80. You just can't make this stuff up. Weekdays from 1 to 3 Eastern. Hey girl, have you done something new with your scales? Using new moisturizer? Nice. It really brings out the hazel in your eyes. Oh, hold on. Are you using whitening strips too? Your fangs look good, girl. Really good. A really charming snake charmer? Surprising. What's not surprising? How much you could save by switching to GEICO. Wait, what? Have you been doing Pilates too? GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. 
You're listening to the Stephen A. Smith Show podcast. To the calls right here on the Stephen A. Smith Show, ESPN Radio. Let's go to Chad and Rockland. You're live with Stephen A. What's up, Chad? Talk to me. Uh, hey, Stephen A. How you doing? Um, I just want to know regarding the Knicks. If uh, David Fisdale, I know he just got released. And I know the the Knicks are moving really well with Hornacek. But if David Fisdale is available in the offseason, do you go after him? I think him on Mark Jackson. Why not Mark Jackson? Mm. I love Mark Jackson. I and love I him. But New I, York ties. See, the problem is New York Knicks don't need just basketball. You need somebody with New York ties that people have faith in when the coach speaks every night and he says believe in us and he's holding people accountable and all of those different things. I'm not saying it has to be that way, but because of how dysfunctional the Knicks franchise has been for so long, I think it's important to go that route. That's just where I'm at with it. I, I get you. I get you. I definitely understand you. And, um, also, just want to say I've been Knicks fan since I was in the womb, and uh, it uh, it warms my heart to see them doing well, especially with the unicorn. Well, up front. you're saying they use, they're doing well. They've lost three straight. Um, you know, Lord knows how many more they're going to lose. They have, you know, listen, they're getting a bit exposed now that teams are getting their legs under them, and they understand what they're dealing with now. It's a little bit different now, bro. It's a little bit different. Yeah. Yeah, it definitely is. It definitely yeah. is. It just, it just lost to Portland last night. Portland ain't that good of a team. Portland was up twenty. They went on a fourteen zero run to try to close the gap, but they were down twenty on Portland. Portland, I right, yeah. but they shouldn't be up twenty on the Knicks. Sorry, I don't believe it. Appreciate the call. Let's go to Baron. You're live with Stephen A. What's up, Baron? Hey, Stephen. Uh, first of all, huge fan. Wanted to ask you um, in regards to that, Greg. Shano uh, yep. scandal. I missed your uh, whatever the podcast when you talked about it. It's called Work. Uh, but um, do we know? Do you know exactly what he knew in regards to that? None of us do. None very- of us do. Here's what happened: a graduate assistant by the name of Mike McQuarry said in a deposition that an assistant coach, Tom Bradley, told him. That Greg Schiano may have known something about what Sandusky was doing. Greg Schiano emphatically denied it. Tom Bradley denied knowing anything or saying anything of such a thing, of such a nature. And that is that. We know One nothing. last question. Does does that hurt him from again getting a big time? Hell yes. Hell yeah. Well, first of all, I don't think he's going to get a big-time college job anyway. Tennessee is mid-major, mid-level, not mid-major, but mid-level. Uh, but but the point is I don't think it's going to help him get a big-time job anyway. But I will tell you this. It definitely ruined it now. If I was him, I would, considering, I would be considering a lawsuit. I'd, I'd probably sue Tennessee. We signed an you know, a, a agreement. That I was going to come on board and you reneged? No way. No way. I would probably sue. Because think about it. If Tennessee hadn't promised him the job, right? Right. Would we be talking about Shiano and all of this right now? No. We wouldn't be even talking about it. Now this man's name is associated with child molestation. Just because people didn't want him to get the job. How fair is that, man? No, it's not. It's criminal. Absolutely criminal. Appreciate the call. Larry, you're live with Stephen A. What's up? Yeah, I, You know, just kind of piggybacking off of what that guy just said, I just want to know what the hell is going on in Tennessee. At the end of the day, I think what's happening, what we're seeing is management not necessarily – making decisions based off of what is best for that particular program. Uh, we're seeing this with Tennessee. Uh, we're seeing this, what happened with the Memphis Grizzlies. And, and I just think it's crazy that both of these are coming out of the same state where you see two coaching, uh, drastic coaching changes where, you know, Shiano. Well, I wouldn't call Butch job. Jones a drastic coaching change, but I get what you're saying. You get what I'm saying. It's just, it's just, to me, I feel, especially with the Shiano situation, what coach is going to really want that job now? 
first of all, you're in one of the most competitive conferences in the SEC. Every year your measuring stick is Nick Saban. So you have to think now, if the social media has the ability to determine your job security and you're, you're, the, you're the athletic director and you're in your mind, you're like, all right, I'm making decisions based off of what's best for my program. You can be easily swayed by social media. What reputable coaches want to go there? Exactly. That's exactly the problem that they have. Now, I appreciate the call, Larry. Thank you so much. 866-SAY-ESPN. Back with your calls and more in a minute. You're listening live to the Stephen A. Smith Show, ESPN Radio. Guess what? You're in the middle of the Stephen A. Smith Show podcast. Damn it, I mean it! Minutes past hour number two right here on the Stephen A. Smith Show, ESPN Radio. Let's get back to the calls at 866-729-ESPN, 866-SAY-ESPN. Let's go to James in Manhattan. You're live with Stephen A. What's up, James? Good afternoon and blessings to you, sir. I, Thank you. I've been a Knicks fan since 1979. I've seen good teams and terrible teams and almost championship teams. Mm-hmm. And I want to ask you, because I do respect your opinion. This is my first time getting through, but I've been listening to you for years. Um, how good do you think Frank Milikina can be? Do you think he can be a good to very good point guard and – um, do you think this Knicks team um, can possibly uh, squeak into the playoffs? What I can tell you about Frank Nielakina is that he does not move me at all. He's only averaging about 19 minutes a game. He's averaging about 4.7 points per game. I'm just not impressed with him at all. He can't. He, he hasn't been able to shoot. He's almost got Lonzo Ball numbers: 34% from the field, 25% from three-point range. He just seems so pedestrian, so ordinary. He can play defense, don't get me wrong, but there's no wow factor with him at all. And I guess for me, when you're a top 10 pick, when I see a, a, you know, a, a Dennis Smith Jr. picked after you, a Malik Monk picked after you, a Donovan Mitchell in Utah picked after you, I'm upset. I'm upset. No, I, I I understand, and I feel you. And I think he also lacks um, good basketball instincts. He, he makes some plays. That I don't just know make about that. I think it's head. too soon. I think it's too soon to gauge that. But you know, the th- the same things I've said about Lonzo Ball: suspect shot, lack of aggression offensively. That's Neil Aquina. And uh, what do you think about the Knicks? <sighs> They've lost three in a row. Um, I'm not surprised. I anticipated that it would happen, uh, but I'm just not overly impressed. They lost at Atlanta after having a lead. They had like a 19-point lead at Houston, lost that game, and then last night they were down 20, losing to Portland. You know, I, I to, to me, Miami and Orlando are next at the Garden. I don't think that they'll win both of those games. So I'm kind of I'm kind of uh, d- down about it. I expected more from them. I'm I'm not happy that I haven't seen more. I think Porzingis is an elite number two option. He is not a number one option. He is not a number one option. And I think all those things don't serve the Knicks well. Fans, and I think their future is very bright. So at least we have that to look forward to. Gotcha. <laughs> I appreciate the call. Thank you so much. Dominic, you're live with Stephen A. Go ahead. Stephen A., how you doing, man? I'm good. Talk to me. Now, see – when you talk about David Tisdale and you talk about the fight that happened with Oakland and you know, Crabtree and Keith Tlaib, you know, you, it just shows that the African American margin for error in sports is just is so small, man. And Absolutely, it's really it's really disappointing to see and disappointing to, to on, be but, a part but, of. But 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 before you go any further, let's be clear: it's hard to accuse Memphis of that because they did the same thing to Dave Yeager too. Even though he lasted a few years, we remember they screwed over Lionel Hollins after right. he had been there for years. But then they screwed over Dave Yeager. Right. So it's it's hard. And you know, just for them to be for them to be bashing, you know, Crabtree and the kids to leave. And we know that this, you know, I heard your point earlier saying that the sport is violent in and of itself. But you have hockey, who are you know that's just as violent a sport if you ask me. They're able to smash each other in the walls and they running in you know even though they're on skates, but they're going in each other full speed without traction. And they fight all the time. They're able to punch each other in the face and do all that stuff. You know, that's, 
allowed in the sport. You know, that's permitted for you know, a certain amount of time. And what are you talking about? Game, not 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 what we saw with the Talib and uh, Crabtree yes uh, Sunday. I've seen the game. You know, I don't I don't watch hockey, but I saw it on Sports Center. I don't, I couldn't even tell you who won this game. There were times where they the puck dropped and they all dropped their gloves, and everybody on this, the the ring started to fight. Everybody started to fight. You don't, do you remember that? I do not remember. I do not remember. But the point is, is that it shouldn't have happened. It can't happen. And I think they deserve the suspension. But I got to go. I appreciate the call, Dominic. Thanks a lot. Chris in L.A., you're live with Stephen A. Talk to me. Hey, right, Stephen A., good afternoon. I'm all right. uh, I just wanted to man. touch on uh, the comment you made. I didn't get a chance to hear Kevin Durant's quote, but I'm going to just go ahead and touch on uh, the comments you made regarding being African-American male myself, uh, the way we dress, the way we speak, the way we go about our day is under a different microscope because obviously we are we, we are we are the minor, we are the minority and it's just unfortunate because that's the world that's the world we live in and with that being said it's it's it, it's tough because I was always told I was always told by my mom if you may not like a job but you go out there and you do the best you can because you can't not just thinking about yourself, you're thinking about the people after you. If you if you're out there, you're not having your business, you're doing a bad job, do you think they're gonna hire another person that may look like you when it's already a few of you guys to begin with? So that's that's just something that I've always been taught and it's been embedded in my mind and it's just uh the way I go about my day and my business. No, so absolutely. I don't know what you have to say no, regarding no, that. You're absolutely right about that. That's exactly the approach you're supposed to have. It's, it's supposed to be true. you're supposed to be transcendent. You're supposed to be thinking about something more than just yourself. And not enough of these guys are doing that. Not when you see the kind of stuff that you saw with Crabtree and Tlaib. Got yourself suspended. In the midst of these protests, you're going to let something like this happen? To a lesser degree, same thing with A.J. Green and Jalen Ramsey. At that particular moment in time, you really going to do that? You don't understand the kind of microscope you're under? You're right. Right. Yeah, it's just unfortunate. But uh, that's all I want to touch on, Stephen. I Thanks a lot, man. I appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Rico, you're live with Stephen A. Talk to me. Hey, how's it going? Stephen A., big fan, man. Big Thank fan. You. Thank you, bro. Go ahead. All right. Um, I just wanted to comment on the uh, Greg Ciano incident. You know, I think the fact that he's not a proven coach, pretty mediocre record, um, an- another Northeast Coast uh, coach that we took, I just don't think the Tennessee fans just wanted that. Um, as far as the child molestation, yeah, 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 but that, but that's not, but that's not the issue. The issue is where they were willing to go just to keep him from getting the job. You know, um, just just in this day of time where you know child molestation rape is is kind of you know high alert right now, I think that just kind of hurt his chances. It's debatable whether he was associated with it or not. But all in all, as a, as a full package, I just don't think he was suitable for UT, and I think that's what drove him out. And also, I don't, I'm not really sure if he's even able to sue because not all four members who are supposed to sign that – is it um, – I can't remember the, the actual name of the contract, but yep. the board of trustees signs it, the AD, the coach that is about to come into the program, and I'm pretty sure the chancellor has to sign it, and I'm – pretty sure only three at the time signed it. So he, uh, I don't think he'll be able to sue. Mm. We'll find out. We'll definitely find out. Appreciate the call, Rico. Thank you. Brian and Callie, you're live with Stephen A. Talk to me, Brian. You know what? Uh, been watching the Steelers since I was five years old, and Big Ben Roethlisberger has been always the poster child for the guy that gets his butt kicked constantly. <laughs> Plays better when he's getting his butt kicked. But I wanted to give a a special thank you to you because somebody had to light a fire underneath this guy's, you know what? That's right. Get him to go, you know what? You're losing your pride. Your pride is the number one thing that most athletes at this caliber are running on. And for some reason, he lost his. And I'm, I'm telling you what, since the comment you made that told him, hey, everybody is watching the number one spot, which is you. That's right. You got to represent this Pittsburgh Steelers organization. Three coaches in the in, in the in the in the franchise history. I mean, you, them, the Patriots, Green Bay. Those three franchises are supposed to stand for something. Hey, listen, man. I will never take back what I said at the particular moment in time that I said what I said when I said go to hell home. It was because 
He talked about retiring after losing the AFC Championship game. He talked about it again over the summer. And then after they lost 30-9 to in Jacksonville, he threw five interceptions. He said, maybe I don't have it anymore. Maybe I need to just step away. And I'm like, I don't need that type of attitude from him. You're a two-time champion and a future Hall of Famer. With Le'Veon Bell and Antonio Brown and Martavis Bryant and Jesse James and Eli Rogers and Smith Juju, uh, Juju Smith-Schuster and all of these boys with a good offensive line. They ain't no damn excuses. What the hell is this? I did not want to hear that from him. And I stand by it. And I don't regret it one bit, Brian. And they did. They, they, you see how they try to change the narrative, you know, where I sat up there. You saw, Did you see him talking in the media just the other day, five weeks after I made the comment, talking about, you know, people saying that I don't have, um, I'm not working hard. I don't want to sacrifice. I never said that, Brian. I said, you, look, you, you know, based on your words and how you've looked, it's like you don't want to play no more. We yeah. can't afford to have that. And I stand by it, Brian. That's exactly how I felt at that particular moment in time. And at that particular moment in time, if it had happened again, I'd say it again. I have no regrets, Brian. It's true. You can't mess with the truth. You know, nine times out of ten, people are scared to death of something like that. But you know what? It's needed. When the truth is the truth, you throw it out there. Imagine the offensive linemen that are sitting there blocking their you-know-what off for somebody that don't really that doesn't really care as much, and maybe I ain't got it. Look at those offensive linemen in the face after they're getting their butts kicked, and they're protecting you, and you're going to be like, hey, well, hmm. you know, maybe I don't got it no more. So much appreciated on this end. I, I appreciate the uh, the awakening comments and the stones it took to say it. So mad props. Thanks a lot, my man. I appreciate it. Take care of yourself. 866-729-ESPN. 866-SAY-ESPN. Your call is to close out the show in a minute. You're listening live to Stephen A. on ESPN Radio. Want to be a part of the show? It's Stephen A. up weekdays from 1 to 3 Eastern at 866-729-3776. Guess what? You're in the middle of the Stephen A. Smith Show podcast. Damn it, I mean it! Eric, you're live with Stephen A. real quick. Go ahead. Hey, Stephen, hey, listen, so the Redskins play the Cowboys uh, this Thursday night, but I want you to put your GM hat on for me and let me know if you think that Kirk Cousins, I know he's a franchise quarterback, but what do you think, think he is? Andrew, so, he's very good. He just never wins when it counts. But would you give him the Andrew Luck deal five years, $120 million No, plus? no. I would not give Kirk okay. Cousins five years, $120 something million. I just couldn't do it. But then again, I'm not the Redskins, and the Redskins might be forced in a different type of situation. So you might have a point there. I got to run, buddy. Thank you. Mike, you're live with Stephen A. Talk to me. Hey, Mike from Pittsburgh. Outstanding. You make me want to shout. Hey, uh, I appreciate your views uh, in paragraph form. Uh, People don't listen to you. All the sentences. Uh, I take it, uh, Pittsburgh uh, five weeks ago and Pittsburgh today. Appreciate and respect your views. I did want to make a comment on the Bronco and uh, Raider fiasco. Yes, sir. Uh, 56 years old. I remember back in the day where brothers didn't screw over brothers in the city, in the workplace, or in sports. Times sure have changed, haven't they? Uh, yeah, it has. I mean, I think that the money has individualized a lot of people. And they speak about coming together collectively. But it's not just brothers. It's not just black folks. It's all of us. As a society, we get caught up in us. We get caught up in now. We get caught up in what the great John Cheney, for former basketball coach at, at Temple, always told me was the microwave society. Instant gratification. And it's about self. And on far too many occasions, we're not transcendent individuals who think beyond ourselves for the betterment of the whole. This is why I encourage people to to listen to everyone from the Joe Madison's to the Karen Hunters and others. No matter what your political views are, anybody that's about something, even listen, I'm not a conservative, but I listen to Mark Levin every chance I get. Uh, the great one. I'm, I'm I'm a fan of his radio show. And Sean Hannity is crazy. He's nuts. But I've known him for years, and and and, and I, I like him, even though I know he can be crazy. I know that whether it's on the left with the two that I mentioned in Madison or Karen Hunter or the right with Hannity and Mark Levin, I know that they're individuals who devoutly believe what they believe. And all you can do is respect it and try to find the truth wherever that may be. 
and that's where and that's what you do, and that's all you can do, Mike, and move forward with with the kind of uh, love in your heart, the kindness in your heart, and the consciousness that you need to have in order to contribute to making society better for us all. That's all you can do. Stuff. All right. Thank you, buddy. I appreciate the call. Let's go to Daryl and Callie. You're live with Stephen A. Wattop. Daryl. Daryl, are you there? Mike in Jersey, you're live with Stephen A. Real quick, go. Hey, Stephen. Well, the Bulls right now, they got a good pick in Lowry. Zach Levine's coming back, and Chris Dunn looks like a top five pick, in addition to the top three pick that they're going to get this year, mm-hmm. and they got a, a huge cap room. Where do you see the Bulls in the future? I think the Bulls will get better. I just don't think Hoiberg's the right coach for the job. I think Hoiberg is made for college. I think he should be back at Iowa. I don't think that he, you know, Iowa State, whichever one he was at, I don't think that he was made for the NBA. I think that he was made for college. Very nice man, knowledgeable about the game of basketball, but I think it takes a little something extra to coach multimillionaire athletes, and I don't think that's his forte. He's better suited for college. I think they need to get a, a guy made for the NBA. That's just what I believe. I appreciate the call. Mike, you're live with Stephen A. Real quick. Got to run. Go ahead, Mike. Hey. Hi, Stephen. I'm a huge fan of everything you have to say. Thank you. Real quick, I want to talk about uh, Hakeem Tlaib and Crabtree. Let's think about the psycholog- psychology behind this. Mm-hmm. How, NFL, how NHL players are allowed, how are allowed, allowed to fight. Now, I'm a white man, so I'm going to sound like I'm going to be basically... I just need to rush you because you only got 45 seconds, so go ahead. Hurry up real quick. Uh, yeah, I'm going to be going against the grain. So the reason why people don't have a problem with hockey players fighting is because basically they're white. And when they see two black men fighting, it perpetuates the stereotype. And it's a shame that it has to be like that, but people don't want to accept that. And well, I, 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 I applaud your courage for admitting something like that. I applaud your courage for admitting that. You didn't have to do that. And that just shows that your conscience is in the right place. And it shows that when you want truth and when you want fairness and things of that nature – you don't always have to look in one direction. It, it comes in all colors, shapes, and sizes. You can find the truth, and you can have, find people with good hearts, good minds, and souls everywhere. And that's what gives us all hope to move forward. It's unfortunate that we have to attach such subjects to the sports world, that we can't just limit ourselves to the games uh, that are being played. But that's the world that we're living in right now because everything has invaded everything else. And that's just where we are. But we can continue to march forward and be productive for everybody's sake. And make sure we all have a good time. 22 hours from now, I'll talk to y'all. And this is Stephen A. Smith signing off. Peace and love. That's just a sample of what you'll hear on the Stephen A. Smith Show. Weekdays at 1 p.m. Eastern on Sirius XM Channel 80 and the ESPN app.